We're live here at Captain Jody Gay at the Cape Lookout Shootout Series Championship. And the Team Blue Water Candy had a successful day today. Start us off today when you guys left. What was the plan and uh, kind of what happened? Uh, Jay, we actually were probably one of the last teams to check out. We were running late this morning. Most of the teams had pinned up bait. And we had, had had some family issues this week and were unable to get up here in time to do that. So uh, we caught bait out front here at Moorhead and... Uh, and uh, we were 7 o'clock checking out, so we were 30 minutes late. We stopped short of where we wanted to go, which was up off of Hatteras. And uh, uh, we you know, had been a bite up there earlier in the week, which on a charter fleet. And uh, so we stopped at some, some areas around Ocracoke and fished. And uh, didn't have any luck. There had been a couple of fish caught there before we got there. Uh, and finally, about 9.30, we blasted off of Hatteras, ran up, and uh, kind of found a little pot of bait off to ourselves. And we were here in the boats catching, you know, a lot of mid-20s fishing. First fish we put in the boat was upper 30s, and then we caught one we thought might be 40, and the tunas were bad. The blackfin tunas were, were eating, us, eating us up pretty bad, so it, but I, there was a little sprig of bait there that I just stayed and stayed and aggravated it instead of getting into fleet, and uh, yeah, it obviously paid off for us. We had uh, uh, you know, a mid-40s fish later in the day, and then about 1.30, uh, prop wash bait with a, with, a, with a pearl blue water candy skirt on it, of course, just, I mean, just exploded, you know, just a big hole knocked in the water. Only bite we had on the short line today, and it uh, just absolutely went into that that speed you don't hear a reel go into very often. You know, mm -hmm. we were fighting a fish at the time, and we uh, just popped him off. We just said, "This is the one we want. Let's go get it." And uh, we went after him because they were going in opposite directions, and and uh, so we we went after him, and obviously it worked out to be the right decision. We couldn't imagine he was as big as he was. Uh, you know, 68 pounds, my personal best by far, and. Uh, I want to Scott, uh, thank Scott Pelletier. Scott has trusted me to run two of his boats last year and this year. Uh, we upgraded to the 33 Onslow Bay, a magnificent boat, I might add. Uh, you know, three 300 Yamahas, just super, super speed, super uh, performance on the boat and the, and the engines as well. And uh, live bait systems, on, you can't be touched. And uh, we, uh, you know, so it's, it's you know, we, we had the big fish. Scott took the rod uh, on that fish. and. And Kent stuck the gaff in him, and, and when we, I saw the gaff in him, we started to get another gaff and decided, no, let's swing him on in here. And we, we swung him in on the deck and obviously had a celebration. And I knew at the time it was probably the biggest fish I'd had in the boat. And, uh, but, but going back to Scott, man, Scott's been great to me. Uh, I've run his boats for two years now. They're him and Kent Rayner, uh, Scott Pelletier, and, uh, and Timmy, Timmy Parker, the, you know, the, the, just the great guys. And we're probably the oldest crew fishing. And... Uh, so as I say, four four blind raccoons found a dumpster today. So uh, we're we're very proud of the fish. We, we truly are, and uh, they're great guys, and very very lucky to have them as friends. So. Now, one of the things, uh, obviously, you guys with uh, you know blue water candy. What would you say? How much does the tackle play a part in the in the king mackerel fishing? Well, it, it obviously plays a lot of a, a big part because it, it, the tackle can't come apart. I mean, when you have a fish explode a line like that, you know, you're fishing with, we fishing with 20 pound test line, you know, light leader. And, uh, you know, just a, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into it. And, and uh, yeah, we, and we, yeah, everybody had rig failure. We have rig failure. We had rig failure early this, during the during national championship this year. Uh, and uh, I'd, I'd like to say we never have a rig come apart, but we had one wire broke on for whatever reason, you know, and, uh, that we think was a very good fish, and uh, I'm sure it wasn't as big as this one today, though. So, and, and this one, this one, this one's uh, is history now. So, well, I tell you, that's you know what a feeling to come to the scale with a 68 pound fish. I mean, that that that's impressive, and that was a very wide fish. I mean, it was a, the, the girth was big on that fish. Yes. yes, it was. We had a fish actually longer than that last year. It was two inches longer. That only weighed 50 pounds. So, so that was a very fat fish, you know. And uh, we've. Uh, uh, you know, very, very fortunate to get it. I mean, I was, I would never call a fish 68 pounds. I'm not used to looking at 68 pound King Michael to, to take a guess at how big the thing was, you know. And uh, so we were, we were, we were surprised. You know, we really were. We knew a 56 was on the scales by the bug of the rug. Stan, I hate it, man. You know, uh, I love you. 56, you should have won, you know, but you caught him the wrong day is all, is all I know. And, uh, you know, cause we were, we were hoping to have him beat. We had no idea we had him beat that bad. Yeah, there was there was rumor here at the weigh-in that you guys had a, a good uh, fish, and then obviously uh, there was definitely a uh, celebration at the scale once sure. you guys found out that it was 68 yeah. pounds. So congratulations on an impressive fish and a great day fishing thank here off the coast of North Carolina. Thank you. I appreciate it. And again, I'd like to thank the guys that I fished with, man, an awesome fishing team, awesome piece of equipment, 
And uh, like I said, Scott's trusted me with, with two different boats of his for, you know, two years back to back. And uh, he's just, just a great friend and, and awesome, awesome owner. Well, definitely King Macro Fishing, it takes yeah. a whole team to make this thing go round. And nobody and... has ever caught one of these. You know, I mean, nobody does it by herself. It's a team effort. And uh, yeah, I just happen to be the, the face of the operation, I guess. But uh, uh, obviously, nobody does these things by herself. I mean, it takes an absolute team to, you know, to make it happen. So. What well, an impressive day for Team Blue Water Candy, and congratulations again. And I'd really like to thank Chad Shingleton and, and and Patrick, the guys here, and the you know the National Guard and the folks that put on this you know for the military appreciation. Uh, guys, will obviously be donating some money to the to the military appreciation guys, and uh, uh, we we appreciate what they do. You know, and this is a great series that Chad and them have got going here, and uh, just look forward to fishing it for years and years to come and see what it does become. I mean, it's it's, it's the it's uh, it's truly a great series. Yeah, and, and you know, with that said too, it's it's great to have the Cape Lookout Shootout series in our backyard here in North Carolina Absolutely. to be able to have a series yes. like this. And obviously, I mean, look at this leaderboard today. Yeah. I mean, it is it That's, is impressive it leaderboard. Is, uh, absolutely sick. You know, when a 53 is third place, that's a that's a that's a sad day. I mean, I think the uh, I think it took a 40 pound fish to be 11th in a 27 boat tournament. You know, that's North Carolina fishing at its finest, and that's what it can be. So, It is. We definitely look forward to uh, watching you guys with the presentation tonight to get the uh, the big check, and then uh, definitely look forward to what you guys are going to bring next year. All right, we do. Thank you so much. We appreciate you all being a part of it. Thank you very much.